All right, good afternoon. We'll call to order this meeting of the Tennessee Advisory Council on Workers' Compensation at uh, approximately 1.30 p.m. on Monday, March 21, 2016, here in the Legislative Plaza in the State Capitol in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm David Lillard, Tennessee State Treasurer and Chair of the Advisory Council, and I welcome you to today's meeting. Our first order of business is we need to call the roll here, so I'll ask Ms. Schroeder to give the roll call. Treasurer Lillard. Carrie Dove. Here. Bruce Fox. Here. John Garrett. Here. Bob Pitts. Here. Gary Selvey. Paul Schaefer. Here. John Burleson. Jason Denton. Sandy Fletchall. Dr. Graves. Abby Hudgens. John Harris. Here. Lynn Lawyer. Jerry Mayo. Dr. Merle. Greg Ramos. Mike Shinnick. Here. Pam Smith. Here. Representative Eldridge. You have a quorum. All right. Thank you for the roll call. The next thing I want to do is I want to introduce a new member of the advisory council, Ms. Pam Smith. Has been appointed by Governor Haslam. Raise your hand there, Ms. Smith. There we are. We appreciate you being here with us today, being a non-voting member of the council. Um, she represents the Tennessee Hospital Association and is one of our health care representatives uh, on the council. Ms. Smith is the Director of Managed Care for LifePoint Health and has over 25 years of experience in the health care industry and is from Mount Juliet. So we welcome you to the advisory council. All right, the next item is item number two, approval of the minutes of February 29, 2016, which have previously been distributed to the members. Do we have comments, questions, or clarifications on the minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Dove. Is there a second? Mr. Schaefer seconds. Seeing no discussion, I'll ask Ms. Schroeder to call the roll to approve the minutes. Treasurer Lillard. Aye. Carrie Dove. Aye. Bruce Fox. Aye. John Garrett. Bob Pitts. Aye. Gary Salvi. Oh, Paul Schaefer. Aye. Name, oh, you have a okay. positive. All right, the minutes are approved from February 29, 2016. New business today before the council is item number three on your agenda, a presentation by the NCCI representative and or their actuary on the voluntary loss cost and assigned risk rate law only, law only filing. Uh, proposed effective August 28, 2016, that's previously been distributed to members of the council and other interested persons. I understand Ms. Amy Quinn will speak to the filing first. Is that correct? All right. All right. Ms. Quinn uh, has yielded to Ms. Anne Marie Smith, who's an actuary for NCCI. Come forward and introduce yourself there on the record and uh, proceed with your remarks. Good morning. My name is Anne Marie Smith. I'm an actuary with the National Council on Compensation Insurance, and I'm here today to speak to you about the law only filing uh, proposed to be effective August 28th, 2016. So, as an overview, this filing reflects the estimated impact of the recent Tennessee rule um, that implements a closed drug formulary as well as medical treatment guidelines. The closed drug form formulary is effective um, August 28, 2016 for new prescriptions and February 28, 2017 for refills. We've estimated the impact for the drug formulary to be a decrease of 2.7% on overall system costs. The implementation of medical treatment guidelines is expected to result in some savings as well, although this pricing doesn't uh, explicitly reflect a quantified amount for that. So the proposed effective date of the filing is the same effective date as um, for new prescriptions, the August 28, 2016, and that's for voluntary loss costs as well as the revised assigned risk rates. So just as a little background, a uh, closed drug formulary is essentially a list of drugs with an associated reimbursement status. For example, the official disability guidelines, the ODG, um, essentially lists a drug with a Y, meaning that it's pre-authorized for use, an N, meaning it's not approved or it needs um, authorization, or uh, an asterisk, which means it can be a Y or an N depending on the use of the drug. If a drug does not appear on the list at all, it's considered a NA or not applicable. 
And just to keep in mind, the drug formulary doesn't speak to the actual rate of the reimbursement, just rather whether preauthorization is necessary. So when looking at the impact of the drug formulary, there are some direct things that we can consider, such as the elimination of end drugs or the substitution impact of switching from an end drug to a drug that's on the Y list. There are some other considerations um, that can impact the, the result, but that can't be quantified, such as behavior of treating physicians, the extent to which alternate medical services might be utilized, the frequency of authorization of end drugs if they continue to be prescribed, and limitations on the use of compounds. So when we did our analysis of this um, drug formulary, we looked at several distant, different estimates. The first being a comparison of the current average wide drug cost in Tennessee versus the current average end drug cost in Tennessee. So if we make the assumption that every end drug were to switch to a Y drug and that the overall cost of those Y drugs would remain the same, that would result in a 56% decrease in just the end drug costs. So, and that's just resulting from the fact that that's the relationship between the average prices. So it's assuming that 100% substitution and assuming that the average Y drug cost wouldn't change. So that's the first estimate that we looked at. For the second one, in Texas, the uh, a similar formulary was put in place in 2011, also based on the ODG. And since then, the Texas Department of Insurance has released a report on the resulting impact. And they have estimated an 83% decrease in end drug costs when they compared fiscal accident year 2011 to fiscal accident year 2012, which is the before and after um, the drug formulary went into effect. And then lastly, NCCI has um, access to the same data that underlied that Texas report, so we looked at it a couple of different ways. And when we looked at accident year 2010 versus 2014, we saw a 92% difference in end drug costs. And when we looked at service year 2010 versus 2014, we then saw a 75% difference. So based on all of these estimates, NCCI selected um, a 75% reduction as the best estimate in the end drug costs in Tennessee, resulting from the implementation of the drug formulary. And then, as you can see on the chart, then we take into account the percentage of end drugs, the percentage of prescription drugs, the overall percentage of medical costs in the state, and that results in the 2.7% decrease in overall costs. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions for Ms. Smith, the actuary from NCCI? Comments on that? All right, thank you very much for your presentation here. Thank you. Okay. All right, next we're going to hear from uh, By the Numbers Actuarial Consulting. Ms. King, are you on the phone with us today? Mary, Hello? Mary Jean King. Yes. Hi, this is Mary Jean King from By the Numbers. I've examined the NCCI filing, and I find it to be reasonable based on actuarial standards of practice. All right. And there's a letter in the files of members uh, in our materials that were distributed today from By the Numbers Actuarial Consulting, which indicates their conclusions with respect to the filing, as Ms. King just affirmed there. And now we'll ask if Mr. Burkhalter or Mr. Wong, who may have any opinions on this issue to please uh, state them on behalf of the Department of Commerce and Insurance. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is Chris Burkhalter um, of Bigger Staff, Watley, Ryan, and Burkhalter. We did review all aspects of the filing as submitted. We did not audit the data or the calculations themselves, so nothing emerging from there gave us any reason to believe that there was any defect in the data or the calculations. We found the overall approach to be reasonable. Uh, the use of Texas data and, and calculations in the absence of full Tennessee data is uh, that would be a common and accepted actuarial practice. Uh, nothing would uh, would violate an, act, uh, an actuarial standard of practice, in our opinion. And uh, the the lack of quantification of medical guideline impact was uh, we felt that was appropriate and unavoidable uh, because that's something that's going to work its way. Uh, into the workers' comp loss costs through a million little interactions that are not really directly calculable uh, by simple math. So overall, um, I said it in a little longer form, 
uh, than Mary Jean did, but uh, we, we found everything to be calculated in accordance with actuarial standards of practice, and we, we uh, have no actuarial objection to the, uh, uh, to the adoption of these new loss costs. All right. Thank you, Mr. Burkhalter. Any questions of Mr. Burkhalter in regard to that? We have a letter from he and his firm dated March 15, 2016, that's in your materials that reflects their conclusions with respect to this matter. All right. Thank you, Mr. Burkhalter, for that presentation. All right, at this point, I think that concludes the uh, uh, statements from actuaries and other professionals with respect to this matter. And as we know, the, the, the Advisory Council has a statutory duty to consider uh, NCCI filings and whether to comment to the Commissioner of Commerce and Insurance on those filings. And so I'll open the floor for discussion with respect to that at this time. And members of the Council. Mr. Chairman, I'm prepared to make a motion. All right, Mr. Pitts. In light of the unanimity of all the actuaries, I move that the Advisory Council recommend to the Commissioner of Commerce and Insurance approval of the request. All right, so that means that we concur in the filing, is that right? Is that, what you're saying? that is correct. Recommend concurring in the file. I second. Schaefer seconds that motion. All right, is there discussion, questions, debate on the motion by Mr. Pitts, second to Mr. Schaefer? All right, seeing none, um, Ms. Schroeder, I'll ask you to call the roll on the motion. Carrie Dove. Aye. Bruce Fox. Aye. John Garrett. Bob Pitts. Aye. Paul Schaefer. It passes. All right. We received the unanimous vote of the voting members of the council. Chair declares the motion passed and accepted. All right. Is there any other business to come before the council at this point in time? And I believe at this point, uh, Ms. Rutter, we don't have any other bills that have been referred or any other business that's pending at the moment. Is that right? All right. So we'll just stand um, uh, adjourned here today with an appropriate motion and perhaps subject to recall into session if it becomes necessary during the remainder of the legislative session. Is there a motion to adjourn? I have a motion by Mr. Dove. Is there a second? second. Mr. Schaefer seconds. Without objection, council stands adjourned. I thank you for your participation today and for your service to the state as members of the advisory council.